there's nothing quite like Bridgerton that gets me out of hibernation. <laughs> Your girl was just recently diagnosed with ADHD. So when it comes to hyper fixating, I am hyper fixating. And I'm like extremely, extremely, extremely excited for British Hen season three. Because when I first started it, I immediately fell in love with Penelope. I love that hoe. Um, I was actually spoiled a lot ahead of time that Penelope Featherington was Lady Whistledown. And although I never really got to experience that big reveal, when I read Romancing Mr. Bridgerton and watched Bridgerton season one, it was still like a big shock. <laughs> I went in knowing, but it was still shocking to see that Penelope, sweet Penelope was Lady Whistledown. But when it came to character analysis, it just made so much sense for her to be Lady Whistledown. All that to summarize, I am in love with Penelope Featherington. She is my wife. She will do no wrong in my eyes. And when she does do wrong in my eyes, I proceed with grace and warmth and hugs because she's she's amazing. I, I have nothing to say. Colin, yeah, I'm not really, I'm, Colin, he's such a cinnamon roll, but then season two, the end kind of threw me in a loop because he was just really rude. Like, I think it was the are you mad and never in your wildest fantasies fight that really threw me in for a loop. If you didn't want to court my girl, you could have deadass just said, I don't know, she's like a friend. Are you mad? Like, that's not what we are. Not in the wildest fantasy. I'm not courting her. That's it. In today's video, I wanted to go and recap and fangirl over all the little, like, crumbs that we've received because <laughs> it is it's crumbs like we have not had a meal yet but honestly it's fine let's just like get into it because i can't like i need to like see the pictures i need to see the clips kind of wanted to start with like the pictures because what the fuck what the flying fuck so last year we actually got like the first look at the to doom event which i like almost sacrificed a leg and an arm for. I'm not gonna lie, I was disappointed because we only got like four stills and I was expecting a lot more. But the four stills that we did get, bitch. The four stills that we did get. My girl Penelope. My girl Penelope. And then, and then Colin, Colin, babyface Colin. No longer babyface. I loved it. But you know what destroyed me with that? like it destroyed everyone else I'm imagining, is the last picture. Recently, Netflix had like a little clip that they montaged with other clips. A lot of people have different theories. People think he's going to ravage her right there and then. My theory on this particular scene and this clip that we received, I think it's like the second episode because it doesn't make sense for them to release promotional videos and photos from like episode six seven eight especially because there's a split in part one and part two with this season don't even get me started on that my theory on this is that colin is going to be apologizing to her i know that the other clip that we received we'll get to that it's penelope telling my man off like she's like fuck you bye i don't want to hear a word from you you didn't want to co court me that's fine but the way you said it you're embarrassed of me and then she like dips that one is confrontational he doesn't really get a word in and i feel like with this plus the picture it kind of just depicts him like slowly inching his way towards her he looks like he's concerned and she looks like she's overwhelmed so i don't know if like something happened at a ballroom she was teased and like this is colin apologizing and proposing to teach her and give her lessons i feel like this is what this is what will kind of like advance the plot for like the rest of the season and i genuinely think this is going to be him talking about lessons and i'm sorry like let me give you lessons so i can help you find a man as if that man's not going to be himself I, he's just literally digging himself into a hole and like to be honest i can't wait because the groveling and jealousy that will probably come from that Speaking of jealousy, I wanted to talk about Lord Devling. I genuinely feel like from how they're presenting everything in the panel and how Nick talked about a suitor for Penn that actually shows like interest in her, I feel like we're gonna fall in love with Lord Devling. I want to fall in love with him and I want Colin to regret his words and to see what he may lose and that is Penelope because Penelope 
chef's case. Like, look at that blue. Look at the blue. She is stunning. Another aspect I'm really excited for is is Francesca and like the little little tiny 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 crumb of Canthony that we got. I personally think from like the leaks that were happening during filming, I have a feeling Kate's gonna be pregnant. And the dynamic that season two kind of established for Canthony essentially remained the same but with like a lot of love and care. And it would be really cool to see Kate fill in the shoes of Daphne from the books considering Daphne will not be in season three. I would like to see some Kate and Colin interactions and like kind of filling that role as like an older sister especially because I have a feeling that Violet Bridgerton is going to be busy this season. I do think one of the new additions to the cast is going to be watering her garden if you know what I mean. So I feel like when it comes to guidance Colin's gonna need a lot of it because he's an oblivious fuck and I would like to see Kate kind of step in be at odds with Antony when it comes to what they think they should do. I feel like that would be really really fun. When it comes to Antony I just want to I just want him to like just like daddy Antony you know like I love them I love Cantony and I'm really excited about their dynamic and I just want him to just be loving up on Kate and taking care of his pregnant wife because I am certain that she is pregnant this season like it's just it has to like it has to be when it comes to Francesca I'm really excited I've yet to read her book but I am aware of a lot of which happens because I've been spoiled. This is the season that she's gonna be coming out into society and I know there was a recasting for Francesca so I think the um, promotion and having her in the pictures, the trailer, hopefully when we get it, will be a nice way for them to like introduce and familiarize the audience with Francesca. She wasn't even invited to her brother's wedding, like it's it's hilarious but like yeah, she she's just kind of been in the back. Like she is kind of like the lost child's archetype so that's really interesting one going into this season. I also want to see if there's any dynamics between Colin and Francesca. Like you know how we have like Benedict and Eloise if like the other siblings have similar or different dynamics with each other. Like I want to see more of that. Eloise. So there's another picture. She looks miserable. <laughs> she looks really sad but so stunning at the same time. Eloise I feel like is going to be at going to be really lonely and lost and she might consider giving in to a lot of things that she's been stubborn about for a while and we might see a new side to her and that's something that I'm really excited for. It might not be pretty, it might not be something that we want to see with her but I am excited to see how they, they kind of like turn that around. When it comes to Benedict, I hope that he doesn't completely give up on his art. Like I know that he'll eventually come back to it but because of how Antony and him ended off this season I think he's gonna have some like internal internal turmoil of like what he should do and what his duties are and we might see more of like Antony's characteristics be reflected on Ben which will be really interesting because he is not Antony. It's giving lost artist and not necessarily responsible adult. <laughs> I do think that this still happens after the moment that we saw like the first clip that we saw. We'll get to that too. Ah! Because at the end of the clip, you see Colin and Penelope hearing someone. I think it might be Eloise or whatever. And they're sh unchaperoned while they're in that drawing room and he's giving lessons. I think that once he steps out, deals with whatever's going outside and comes back in, Penelope's already reading through his shit. And like that's when the letter opening, the anger, all that will happen. I don't think it's gonna be like the book, El Penelope's coming to visit Eloise and then he's at the chamber pot. Like I don't think like that's gonna happen. I think this this whole scene is gonna draw out. It's gonna be the same scene considering they're wearing the same stuff. I think like it's gonna happen right after. So it might be like a chunk of time given for this particular scene. Like you might have get lessons, Colin being flustered, him walking away, him coming back, and then poof, cut, and then more intimacy. Without further ado, I'm going to go through the clips that I briefly kind of mentioned. Some of them I've just been re-watching like over and over, but it's been a while. Like I basically went cold turkey so that I could film this and like give myself some break before I dissect them again and like really get into them. So, so this was the first clip that we got. Your eyes. She's so beautiful. 
Yeah, somehow they shine even brighter. I don't want to be archived. You don't understand. The first time I watched that, I screamed. I, I fell in love with her. Like, how are you not gonna fall in love with her? Like, I understand he's flustered and he should be. How did you not fall in love with her right then and there? I love that Colin and Penelope are both writers. I hope that that hopeless, romantic, plaguing feeling writers usually feel <laughs> will kind of be reflected in how they talk to each other. Because I want another, you're the bane of my existence. I want another, for the mo- mint. And I would say Colin's declaration of love in the books is chef's kiss i love it so sweet it's so romantic some variation of that or even more that the writers of bridgerton kind of come up with i'm so excited to see and it better pop off because penelope deserves everything in this clip we see her get lost in him considering after she said it he got flustered she started looking around like oh shit did i just say that which is so cute and like the little like nervous gulps and stuff they're so fucking cute i'm gonna cry i feel like this is like one of the the earlier lessons it's just gonna get worse and worse for Colin I'm hoping for more flustered energy I'm hoping for more chaos more confusion because you know Colin Bridgerton is always confused he'd be staying oblivious ah, I'm so excited and then there's the other clip good night Mr. Bridgerton do you not need a chaperone spinsters do not need chaperones <laughs> you are not a spinster when he says you are not a spinster, he's more playful. Like, am I wrong? I didn't really see that as much in season one and two. Like, yeah, there were moments, but I wanted to see like that banter, that playfulness. And in that one line, Luke Newton literally delivers. He like looks her up and down. He like chuckles a little bit, like under his breath. <laughs> you are not a spinster. Marriage mark with no prospects to show for it. What would you call that? Oh, she's so stunning. Something wrong. Pen. Yes, of course something is wrong. He's such a brick wall, I swear. I wrote to you this summer, as I always do. Why, well, you did not respond? <laughs> admittedly, very few did, but... The admittedly, very few did. The season may also play on the fact that he's the third child, and a lot of the time, third ch child syndrome. <laughs> it makes sense considering Colin is a huge traveler, so he, he goes out and sources and fishes for his, like, fulfillment and like his happiness and he just he's kind of lost like similar to Francesca Colin relates so like if any siblings are going to be close in this season I would like to see Francesca and Colin relate in that regard but the fact that like she didn't even like answer to his letters yes man yes if you are going to make me say it out loud I miss you <laughs> say something about this in season two when colin comes back and they're at the races and then penelope's like pretending she doesn't see him and like they come together colin there's a moment where i feel like he wants to say he missed her but like he stutters like he he just kind of like he like holds something back Pen. how have you been it's it's just the difference of it all how have you been well i miss you I don't think it was meant to be like snarky as people are considering it to be like yeah he has an ego and he needs to be humbled but i don't think that him saying i miss you was a way for like him to like tow around or like fish for attention like i genuinely think he misses her he missed her like they're friends we're gonna pretend he didn't say what he said at season end of season two but like other than that like they're friends the fact that he was able to just like say it it speaks volumes on his character development already even though it's like not the biggest development and the fact that she like laughs in his face after pen marry me you miss me <laughs> his nod is hilarious he's so satisfied with himself i have heard you yes you did and my mama's ball last, last season, season. Telling everyone how you would never ever call Penelope Featherington. He also said, Are you mad? And I would never date her in your wildest fantasies life. Perhaps we should talk about this somewhere more private. Because I embarrass you. I am the laughing stock of the town even when I change my entire wardrobe. Baby. It just never occurred to me that you of all people could be so cruel. Yes, walk away. Walk away. Aww. Her being bold like this and like talking straight up about her feelings. Our pen is in a really dark place right now. She's lost both of her friends and she literally just wants to get married and continue letting whistle down. Which I feel like it, it brings forth unhinged energy right from the get-go. Which can be 
fun to work with, but I am also I'm a little bit nervous of like what she's going to be doing with Lady Whistledown. And I have a feeling that in the in Bridgerton they're not gonna have her give it up. So I'm interested to see how everything will play out in this season. My babies! I'm so excited! Anytime there's like a new update or a new clip in Crumb that we receive from Bridgerton, I'll probably do like live reactions. I want to be involved in this process as much as I can. I love Bridgerton. It's something that's keeping me alive at the moment. I am planning to take a day off, girl, from work just so I can watch this and be at peace with it and then watch the edits after because the editing community saves lives. This promotional content, I'm it's long overdue, but I'm glad we're getting it. I think we're going to be getting a lot more as like the months go by. The interviews alone have had me in a chokehold. The chemistry is chemistrying. That's a comment I've been reading a lot and I completely agree. I'm ready for friends to lovers, groveling jealousy. I'm ready for she fell first, he fell harder this is Colin's time to pine for Penn and this is Penn's time to reflect on what she wants and what she doesn't and get it on with a couple of the suitors like deviling like I know they're not gonna do nothing with you but like it'd be fun to just even flirt and learn the lessons and practice on deviling and Colin's gonna realize that shit I'm helping her find a husband but I want to be her husband you'll see me at every trailer <laughs> You'll see me once the episodes roll out. I am so excited and I hope you guys are too. Bye.